Cherry shrimp are fascinating little creatures that bring tons of personality and movement to our aquariums. And every single day, somebody asks me a question relating to the life cycle of the cherry shrimp. So I thought in this video, I would discuss every aspect of that life cycle. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Richard. And if you haven't done so already, you can download a free copy of my Nea Caridina ebook in the description below. Now the life cycle of the Nea Caridina shrimp is, is truly fascinating. And in this video, let's start with the adult shrimp. Now, generally speaking, it takes around four to six months for Nea Caridina shrimp to mature, to become adult. As an adult, Nea Caridina shrimp typically reach about 1.6 inches, about four centimeters long. Now, female shrimp do tend to be slightly larger than the males. And typically, although not always, they do have brighter coloration. On the whole, a larger, brighter, more darkly colored shrimp will be a female and a smaller, less colorful, typically even partially translucent shrimp will be a male. Now with that said, you do get brightly colored males, you do get poorly colored females, but on the whole, that's a great way to sex them. Another great way to sex them is by looking for that golden saddle. It's for looking for the eggs inside the female as they move down her back. Or of course, if a shrimp is holding eggs, then it's also female. The males don't hold the eggs at all. In fact, the males take no parental care of the eggs or the babies at whatsoever. Now, as the female shrimp matures, you may well notice she develops what they call a golden saddle. And this is essentially a bright yellow to orange patch that develops just behind her head at the top of her back. Now, this is the eggs developing inside her body. And as those eggs mature, they will move further and further down her body until she's ready to release those eggs and mate with the male. Now, just before she releases the eggs, the female will molt. Now, molting essentially means she comes, pulls herself out of her old skin, where she's got a nice new, slightly larger exoskeleton, a slightly larger skin underneath. At this point, the female will feel vulnerable her new, her new body is soft, it's not as hard as the old exoskeleton. So what she will do, she will typically go and hide in the, in the rocks or in a clump of plants. She knows she's vulnerable to predators, so she'll tuck herself away. So if she's tucked herself away in a hiding place and she's ready to breed, how on earth are the males going to find her? Well luckily, when she molts, she releases a pheromone into the water. And the males can detect this pheromone and they will know exactly where she is. So, not long after the mature female molts, the males will find her. When they do, she will release her eggs and the male, one male, will fertilize them. Now this process only takes 10 to 15 seconds. It doesn't take very long at all. Now once the male has fertilized the eggs, the female will hold them under her body for the full duration of their development. And it takes around 30 days for the eggs to go from a fertile egg all the way through to a fully developed baby. And you can often see the females moving around the aquarium, holding the eggs in place. The eggs themselves can be anything, they can be white, they can be yellow, they can be orange, they can even be green. And you'll often see the female fanning the eggs with her swimmerettes to keep fresh, well oxygenated water moving across the eggs and prevent debris and fungus from developing on them. Now people do often find unfortunate that sometimes whilst holding the eggs, the female appears to drop them for no apparent reason. And while sometimes she will literally drop them because for no apparent reason, often she drops them for stress related reasons. Either conditions aren't optimal for breeding, maybe the temperature is too high or too low, maybe she's recently been moved, or maybe a large partial water change has taken place. When female shrimp become stressed, they will, one of the first things they will do is unfortunately drop their eggs. And whilst there are reports of people collecting those eggs up and successfully hatching them, Typically, if a female drops the eggs, it's one of those things. It's best to let those go by the wayside and try and keep conditions stable. So next time, she'll hopefully hold the eggs all the way through until she releases the babies. Now, as I say, these eggs take about 30 days to fully develop, at which point, unlike say, an Amano shrimp, the babies don't go through a larval stage. They emerge, they emerge from the eggs, fully developed as tiny, baby shrimp and from this point on the female takes no further parental care the baby shrimp are there on their own they need to instantly find food and keep themselves alive baby shrimp are incredibly small and it's not uncommon for us aquarists 
to see the female holding eggs, then we see and she's got nothing, no sign of the eggs, nothing. Those babies will often hide for the first two or three weeks. And then suddenly you'll see your first sign of a small baby walking across the glass, walking across the subject, wherever it might be. At that point, the baby is probably two or three weeks old, but they are just so small, they can easily hide in, even in the most sparsely decorated aquarium. In the tanks like mine, where I keep them absolutely stocked with plants or java moss, the baby shrimp tuck themselves in there and we don't see them for two or three weeks. Now, once you do realize you have baby shrimp, whilst they do consume a lot of biofilm, they will also need some proper food. And you can add powdered food or you can finely crush up flake food. Or if you feed something like rapashi food, as the adults pick at that, tiny bits will come off and the babies will find that when it settles on plants or on the substrate. The baby neocaridina shrimp are essentially tiny copies of their parents. And from being released from the eggs, they will often go into the rocks or into clumps of plants where they will find biofilm. And biofilm is the perfect starter food for baby shrimp. Baby shrimp are so small, even crushed flake food can potentially be too large for them. So the first meal is typically biofilm. Now, as these shrimp grow, they will typically molt once a week for the first few weeks of their lives. And then that will slow down. They'll molt once a fortnight, once every three weeks until they reach maturity. And at four to six months of age, they'll typically be mature shrimp and they'll then just molt around once a month. So as the female matures, she will develop the golden saddle and the whole process will start again. And shrimp are typically very easy to breed. Once you get conditions right, once you get a stable aquarium for them to live in, it doesn't take long before your five or 10 shrimp have become 50 or 100 shrimp. As long as you can provide stable, optimal conditions for the shrimp, and you provide plenty of food and keep the predators down to a minimum, then usually it's fairly easy to increase the size of your colony. I've always found reds, yellows, greens so easy to breed that each month I breed enough to sell and make a decent profit. And if you want to know how to make profit breeding and selling your red cherry shrimp, you definitely watch this video next. Thanks for watching.